Welcome to European Railway, the DVD magazine for the continental enthusiast. In this issue, we travel to Switzerland to look at train activity along the shores of Lake Zurich. A study of commuter line traffic to the north of Paris. A visit to freight and passenger lines in the northern part of the Czech Republic. Narrow gauge passenger workings on Switzerland's Appenzellerbahnen. And finally, an extended look at steam and diesel workings on the Hartz meter gauge network in Germany. We begin this program on the banks of Lake Zurichsee, on the main line to the southeast of Zurich towards Zargans. The lake itself is around 40 kilometers long and about 3 kilometers wide, with an average depth of 49 meters. It is fed by the river Lindt at its southern end and before outflowing through the city of Zurich via the river Limmatal. This is a busy railway route with intercity express trains mixing with local commuter and freight services. In the opposite direction, number 021 hurries an engineer's train south towards Vadensville. There are a number of freight services to be seen along this line, mainly operating in the morning and again in the late afternoon. The road bridge just to the south of the station offers us this view of 45109 and 058 on a commuter line S2 service to Ziegelbrücke. The early morning sun reflects off the nearby lake. In the summer, the waters around here are popular with swimmers, as the relatively shallow water can reach temperatures of over 20 degrees Celsius. 61 class 514 double-deck electric multiple units were delivered to the Zurich S-Bahn commuter lines between 2006 and 2009. A kilometer to the south, and locomotive number 841028 heads southbound for Ziegelbrücke.
The 0840 from Zurich to Vienne passes through Vadensville, formed of a pair of railjet trains powered by Austrian class 1116 locomotives. The station here is right on the banks of the lake and offers a great vantage point for views to be had across the water. The Zud Ostbahn operates services on the line from here to Einseideln. Here, 526043 heads south. The town of Vadensville has lost its regular freight services, the goods depot here now being used by a local firm for storage. There is a constant stream of trains on this line, and it is well worth a visit should you be in the area. Green liveried number 11130 heads a short southbound freight as it passes two northbound passenger services. Note the giant insect on the camera lens. Adding to the variety of locomotive types seen here is class 460 number 082, which drifts into view with the 0816 from Kur.
finally, 460037 arrives with the 0932 from Basel. In this section, we sample the typical activity to be seen on one of the suburban and intercity main lines heading north out of Paris towards Mantes and onwards to Rouen. We are at Villennes-sur-Seine as we look north at the 1003 from Le Havre to Paris-Saint-Lazare, which is being powered at the rear by BB15047. Algentoy-based Z26500, number 556, is one of 16 sets used on services in the Normandy region. This one is on a working to Cirquigny. The centre of the town is just in front of the station. Away to the left are the main shops. The 27300s work many of the local stopping services, especially on trains to and from Mantes. This is the 1112 arrival for Paris. Number 27353 is based at the nearby Acheray depot and was introduced into traffic on the 4th of August 2008. The River Seine is not too far away. This is one of its channels as the river heads north towards the sea. Arriving at the station is one of the endangered class BB17000 locomotives, number 038. Having entered traffic in the summer of 1966, this machine is now in its 46th year of operation. With new trains on the horizon, the days are now numbered for this venerable class of locomotive.
there is a half-hourly service to and from the capital. Most trains are push-pull operated, with the locomotive nearly always at the Paris end of the formation.
Our final scene shows number 17041. Before we leave the Paris suburbs, we thought it a good opportunity to witness two workings operated by the rapidly diminishing Z5300 stainless steel electric multiple units, dating from the mid-1960s. BB7200 locomotives, fitted with push-pull equipment and redesignated as Class BB7600, together with the new Z50000 multiple units, means that these and the similar Z6100 train sets will also finally cease operations over the coming months. Scenes like this will therefore become a distant memory. In issue number 43, we featured the railways that run along the course of the Elbe River, on its way north out of the country towards Germany. In this section, we continue with a look at the lines that run up to the large town of Usti nad Lebem, before we head west to a couple of locations on the main route to the town of Most. We begin along the east bank of the river Elbe, just to the south of Usti nad Lebem, opposite the town of Vanyov, Heading one of the hourly local passenger services is 163095. There were six freight trains seen during the hour we were here. In this view, recently repainted 123002 heads south at just before 6 p.m. on Friday the 13th of April 2011. A surprise. Preserved historic rail bus number M132549 and a similar passenger car head north. This type of unit dates from the early 1950s. They were all withdrawn by 1984. Class 122 and Class 123 electrics were the most common types seen on freight traffic on this line. The Class 122s were built in 1967, whilst the 123s were built four years later. Both classes are locally based.
Around two kilometers further north, the view is dominated by the Hrad Strakov Castle. Standing on a 100 meter high outcrop, it dates from the 14th century when it was used to protect the important waterway and to collect duties. Coal trains operate at least every hour, heading for the power generating station situated further up the river towards Praha. The Class 163s are a 1980s built machine and operate most of the local passenger trains to be seen in the area. Advanced World Transport are a large private freight and passenger operator in the Czech Republic. Here, one of its modernized Class 753 diesels heads a southbound container train at just after 7 p.m.
following morning, we head west along one of the Elba's tributary rivers, the Belina. We are at the small station at Belina Kizelka, on the route linking the coal fields around Komutov and the petrochemical plants around Most to the main rail routes running along the Elba River Valley. There is an hourly passenger service between here and Yechin, some of which are operated by class 471 multiple units, such as this example seen here. For a Saturday, traffic levels were busy, with four freight and two passenger trains noted each hour. trains from the northwest of the country to Praha are worked by dual voltage class 363 electrics. There are just a handful of Class 110 locomotives left in traffic. This one heads east on a trip working from Most.
We now move further west and to the town of Zelenitsa, which is again on the three-track route towards Most. Passing through with the 0813 inter-regional train from Hyeb to Praha is 363054. In the background is the Brzozhen mountain, as we see another local train arriving behind 163099. Next stop for this train is the town of Most.
In the final part of this section, we move to the station at Trzebuzitsi as 363132 lowers its pantograph as it approaches the junction. Our final two scenes come from the station at Kadan as one of SD's Class 114 electric shunting locos sorts wagons in the nearby power station. There are four members of this class which were built by Skoda in 1991. Finally, dual voltage electric number 363047, resplendent in the new Czech Railways corporate blue livery, runs into the station prior to working a westbound coal train. With the heavy mining and petrochemical industry, this area of the Czech Republic has busy freight and passenger lines, as well as interesting types of motive power, with some classes of locomotive now approaching 50 years old. The narrow-gauge lines of Switzerland have a wide appeal to tourists and railway enthusiasts alike, one reason being that they often run in picturesque mountain areas using rack railways to gain height. One such line is the Appenzeller Bahn, which operates routes to the south and east of St. Gallen, to Appenzell and onwards to Altstettenstadt. We take a look at operations in April 2011 during an excellent spell of spring weather. Climbing out of the Rhine Valley close to Altstetten, this section of Rack Railway allows trains to climb the 160% gradient with ease. Here the train passes Wormsburg on one of the hourly passenger services. During our visit, engineering works were taking place at Geish, preventing trains travelling on the route to Appenzell. Trains from Altstetten were terminating here, connecting with services to and from St. Gallen.
Just south of the town, the train to Appenzell was, on this occasion, a replacement bus service. The scenery around here is superb, with lush alpine meadows overlooked by high, snow-covered mountains. This is the scene at Appenzell as a service from Gossau arrives in the shape of 1986-built three-car unit number 43. With engineering work also closing the branch down to Wasserauen, the train quickly returned on the next service back down to Gossau. In another superb alpine setting, the train approaches the village of Gonten. Finally, on the other side of the village, a service for Appenzell makes its way up the valley. Our final section in this program focuses on the famous Hartz narrow gauge lines to the south of Wernigerode, a network which is now an extremely popular tourist destination. The operations are seen at their best in the winter months, where snow and steam offer an irresistible combination. But first we have to get there, and what better way than behind a V200 diesel hydraulic? The date is the 28th of January 2012, and the location is Ham, where V200033 is seen backing onto a charter train for Wernigerode. This locomotive is based at Ham, and is the only authentic operational locomotive of its type. Many others survive, but they have either been modernized or are static exhibits.
At Wernigerode, the tour company organized a special train up to Brocken, hauled by both of Harzer Schmalspurbahnen, or HSB's, serviceable class 99.5 Mallet steam locomotives. This was to be a very unusual steam pairing. Unfortunately, a fault with number 5906 meant it being replaced by one of the line's more usual class 997 locomotives. Later we leave the station behind one of the resident class 199 diesels as we see the errant 5906 parked up in one of the yard sidings. Class 199s are XDR standard gauge class 201 diesels, converted in 1989 for use on the Hartz rail system. Ten locos were converted, but today only around five remain in regular traffic. In the winter months, they tend to operate on passenger services more frequently than in the summer, although their primary role is operating engineering trains or freight services. For those enthusiasts travelling on the V200 rail tour back to Ham, departure time was fast approaching. weeks later and our cameraman was back to film the line in the winter snow. At Quedlinburg, HEX mainline services are operated by 12 Alstom built Lint Type 41 two-car diesel units and seven Type 27 single rail cars. The line here connects to the HSB network after the meter gauge line was extended the eight and a half kilometers along the old standard gauge track bed from Gernrode to Quedlinburg in 2005, with a regular steam service starting with the introduction of the summer timetable on the 26th of June 2006.
The line runs through to Hasselfelde and Harzegerode before joining up with the Nordhausen to Wernigerode section at Eisfelde Talmühle. This section of the HSB is also known as the Selke Valley Railway as it largely follows the river bearing the same name. This is the view just to the west of Meddischbrunn. This is Hasselfelder, as number 997235, a locomotive built in 1955, is seen running around its train before departing with the 1608 service to Eisfelder Talmühle. It will then work a train back to Quedlinburg. This is Eisfelder Talmühle station as the locomotive uncouples from its train and prepares to return back in the opposite direction. Here it is possible to connect with a southbound steam haul train back to Nordhausen.
The following day, we are again at Eisfelder Talmüller, this time aboard the 0921 to Brocken, as it overtakes the 0921 diesel operated service to Hasselfelder. Diesel units are fairly common on the line to Nordhausen and along the Selke Valley route. Here, 187016 departs Drei Annenhohner with the 1625 service from Wernigerode. In 1996, the line purchased two rail cars from the Inselbahn. Number 187013 leaves the suburbs of Wernigerode with the 0725 service to Eisfelder Talmüller. The rail car dates from 1955. The most popular journey on the line is up to the ex-Soviet radar station at the summit of the Brocken. When the sun shines and there is snow on the ground, it is a superb journey to undertake. Will our luck be in today, as we begin early in the morning at Wernigerode Shed, as locomotives prepare for their upcoming day's duties. The date is the 13th of February 2012 and already the day is breaking with a clear blue sky as 199861 eases out of its overnight home.
Hopes for some sun appear to be dashed as low cloud descends on the town. The first train to Nordhausen heads out of the station. We are now on our way as locomotive number 997236 takes us out of Wernigerode and onwards up to Drei Annenhohner. Now entering Drei Annenhohner station as 199872 is seen on snow clearance duties. By now the clouds were beginning to break and the prospect for sun at the top of the Brocken was increasing by the minute. As we leave the station, passengers give us a wave goodbye. Now the most spectacular part of the ride was about to commence. Let's sit back and marvel at the snow-covered landscape as we climb higher up to the summit station at Brocken.
The summit of the line at 1,124 meters above sea level is just 17 meters below the summit of the mountain. Some one and three quarter hours after leaving Wernigerode, we roll into Brocken Station in glorious sunny weather, albeit with the temperature well below freezing. Later in the day, the weather has completely changed, as number 7236 is seen once again, this time with a train from Drei Annenhohne. Number 92222 has just arrived with the 1016 from Nordhausen. This locomotive came to the HSB in 1966 from the Eisfeld Schönbrunn line. As the loco moves away into the distance, we would like to thank you for watching this edition of European Railway. Music